Hello, my name is Juan Echanove, and I am the Associate Vice President for Food and Water Systems at CARE. And I'm going to try to describe now very briefly in some 15 minutes what are the anticipated impacts in terms of global food security of the ongoing uh, conflict uh, in Ukraine. I mean, and the first thing to keep in mind is that the situation in terms of food insecurity in the world was already very there well before the conflict. <laughs> Even before the pandemic crisis, already in 2019, FAO was estimating that close to 700 million people, which is 9% of the world's population, were facing food insecurity and going hungry. And of course, the pandemic and the um, lockdowns during the pandemic deteriorated the situation further because of the economic crisis that they caused. Plus the climate related shocks, conflict insecurity that has been growing during the last couple of years meant that already in 2020, there were 118 million more people facing hunger compared to the year before. There is no data yet available of 2021, but everything indicates that also the number was an increase. So the situation in terms of food insecurity in the world has been deteriorating in the last few years. And now we have this event, which is the war in Ukraine, which is having a direct impact in the capacity for Ukraine to produce foodstuffs, right? Because of the war. And Ukraine, it's actually one of the main producers of some of basic food items globally. It's the number one producer of, producer of sunflower seed, which is basic. Uh, a basic commodity, of course, to produce the sunflower oil. It's the sixth producer of corn, also barley, red seed, very high in the ranking, ninth producer of wheat, ninth of soybeans. So it's a bread basket of the world, Ukraine, and the production in the country is declined. But it's not only about that. The thing is that this conflict is creating disruptions in the maritime traffic, in the maritime um, the trade in the Black Sea. Uh, because harbors are closed because of the war and because insurance companies are charging, ver I mean, high prices to vessels to, 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 to travel to the Black Sea, both for harbors in Russia and in Ukraine. And then there is the sanctions that the West and the global community are imposing in Russia and the sanctions that also Russia are, are, are putting forward to third countries. Because of these blockages in the Black Sea, um, uh, and the reduction in the production anyway in Ukraine uh, due to the war, there is a reduction in exports coming from both from Russia um, and from Ukraine. Uh, uh, and you know, both together account from almost one third of the wheat produced in the world and three quarters of the sunflower oil. And there are lots of countries, nearly 50 countries that are dependent on Russians and Ukraine for a third of the wheat production. But these blockages happening in the Black Sea trade, this disruption of trade, plus the sanctions uh, that Russia is putting forward in this case, um, are also creating disruptions in fertilizer supply. Why? Because Russia is one of the main exporter, actually the main, the largest exporter of fertilizers in the world. So less fertilizers available because the main exporter, which is Russia, is uh, not able and not willing to export as much as it was exporting before. And finally, the sanctions are also having an impact in terms of fuel, uh, because Russia is also one key exporter of oil and natural gas. And that basically means a sharp increase in fuel prices, uh, as you can see in the chart here, two really unprecedented levels. The decline in agricultural production, the reduction on agricultural exports means that there is less food aid available. Because in fact, during the last decade, Ukraine has become one of the top producers of food stamps that were used for food aid by Gold Food Program and other key donors. We were talking before about the disruptions in the supply of fertilizers. And fertilizers are key to secure productivity in farmlands. So what we can anticipate is that because there will be less, there are already less fertilizers available, many farmers in Africa, in Latin America, in Asia will not be able to use them. So we will see a, a decline in farm productivity in the upcoming uh, six months or so. So if Ukraine is producing less because of the war, if both Russia and Ukraine are exporting less because of the blockage in the Black Sea, 
if farmers will face less productivity because there are less fertilizer survival, all that means that there is a danger that in the upcoming months, there might be less food available in, in the world to feed the planet. And on the other hand, this increase in fuel prices means higher production costs for agricultural and food processing. Higher costs of, of, for farmers to produce, higher costs for transportation of foodstuffs, higher costs for cooling um, a food production in the supermarkets and so on. So when you have in the one hand, this risk of less food available plus higher cost of, product, of producing food, that basically means a sharp food cost increase, which is what we already see virtually in every country in the world, as you can see in this chart. Some of you may know that back in 2008 and in 2011, there was a sharp increase in food prices globally. Okay, what we see now is that prices are much higher on comparative levels to what the situation was at that time. In fact, uh, if we look into the historical record of global average prices of food, the last couple of months have been the highest ever. So with less food aid available and this sharp food increase, the danger ahead, the problem that we foresee ahead of us is that there will be an increase in acute hunger. And according to estimations of World Food Program, there could be up to 47 million more people with acute hunger this year in 2022, in addition to the estimations that they were putting forward before the war. So we have this combination here of different factors that we have described. There is less food available because of the war. But the other problem is that the food that is available is less accessible because of these disruptions in trade, because of the uh, uh, sanctions. And this, the food that is accessible is actually becoming not affordable by, by consumers because of the cost increase of the food. So there is this danger of malnutrition augmenting in many parts of the world. This is not going to hit every country in the same manner. And of course, the countries which are highly dependent on food aid, countries in context, in fragile context, context co countries facing conflict like Afghanistan, Somalia, Yemen, Sudan, Syria, are, 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 are really those uh, that we should be more concerned about. But actually, because as we saw before, this has implications in the production by small scale farmers uh, globally, many other countries in the world are, 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 are at risk, including, for instance, countries in the Middle East that are very dependent in imports of wheat from Ukraine and Russia, like Egypt or Lebanon, or countries like uh, West African countries, but also countries in Latin America, which are very dependent on imported fertilizers. So at the end of the day, in one way or another, the food insecurity crisis will affect a plurality, a plurality of countries um, worldwide. We have been describing so far the food insecurity crisis, but the thing is that this will, at the end of the day, also have impacts that goes well beyond food systems. For instance, we know from the food crisis of 2008 that when there is a food cost increase, there is this risk of land grabbing, meaning that rich countries, you know, go countries in the, in the Gulf or, or, or China or other countries may be tempted to buy large uh, uh, plots of land in the global south, in Africa and Latin America to try to secure production for their own consumers and then competing with the local uh, production or, or, or taking land that eventually, uh, you know, uh, local farmers could also need to produce. But beyond this, you know, impacts on, on land, uh, et cetera, there is direct possibility or certainty of social impacts such as, of course, risk of gender-based violence to augment. Um, acute hunger, more food insecurity means further inequality, inequality between genders, inequality between the rich and the poor. And at the end of the day, that could eventually bring conflict and insecurity. And we see some early indications of that, like uh, 
in Peru, in Sri Lanka and in other countries where because of the rising food prices, there is already some elements of a social conflict going on. But the thing is that, you know, the old problems, old brackets that were happening before this uh, war in Ukraine are still there. Climate shocks are still there. Droughts are still there. And they can still cause, and they are causing large scale displacement. And, you know, the, the, the risk is that if this uh, acute hunger that may, uh, uh, you know, happen in the upcoming months will trigger further conflict and insecurity, that again will um, increase the danger of displacement or more displacement. And at the end of the day, it's a sort of vicious circle of problems feeding to each other. So the problem is not just confined to what we see now, but how this loop of problems can keep growing. So what, what to do, what a global community could do in face of these many challenges? I mean, it, let's just start for the most urgent things, which is that there is less food aid available and there is this possibility of acute hunger to augment. And that of course required to scale up life-saving humanitarian assistance, saving lives with a strong focus on fragile context. So we need donors to allocate more resources for food aid, for more cash, for more vouchers. And we need to target the most vulnerable as you know, the crisis uh, will mean probably more people in acute hunger and resources are scarce. We need to really prioritize those who are more vulnerable. Uh, we were talking about trade disruptions, about higher cost of food, of course. And, and there are me some measures that could have an immediate impact that are definitely necessary. One is to advocate to keep international trade open and for countries to diversify their imports. Um, again, referring to the crisis in 2008, what happened is that many countries decided to close their borders, uh, uh, basically prohibit, I mean, uh, I am uh, not allowing export of some food, basic food commodities, because they thought that that was the best way to make sure that they could, uh, that their people, the people in their countries, their citizens could remain food secure and could avoid food insecurity. But actually what happened was the opposite. Many countries uh, blocking trade meant at the other day that food insecurity increased. So keeping international trade open is important. And as it is also important, like right now, and that can have impact in a matter of weeks, upscale social safety nets programs, right? So donors to allocate resources for countries, particularly for poor countries, which are more exposed to these risks, to uh, have resources for social safety nets. So the poor can have extra resources to, aff for, to afford food, which is now more expensive. Uh, but uh, as we described before, there is a number of, 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 of uh, issues or elements uh, in, in, in this complex problem uh, that have to do with agricultural productivity. So how we will address them? Because we have to, if we really want to make sure that we bring durable solutions uh, uh, to what the world is facing. And indeed there is a need to increase domestic food production right now. And also to reduce food loss and waste. Uh, as we said, there is the risk of less food to be available because less fertilizers, uh, because less exports, because trade disruptions. So now more than ever, it's important that we limit the food that is lost and is wasted. Right now, one third of all the food that is produced at the end of the day is wasted. Now that food will be, or maybe more scarce, there are extra reasons to invest in storage, to invest in avoiding food loss. The world is heavily uh, dependent on fertilizers and fertilizers markets are disrupted. So there is a strong case to promote more efficient use of fertilizers because very often farmers tend to use even more fertilizers to what they need. They need. So let's rationalize, let's, let's you know, make sure that farmers supply uh, fertilizers in a more efficient manner. And let's promote agroecology because there are ways to promote the, the, healthy of, the health of the soils um, avoiding chemical fertilizers and promoting agroecological part, uh, 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 to approaches, which now are more needed than ever. And supporting the smaller scale women producers, 
uh, small scale producers in general are key in food systems globally. And we know from evidence that women and small scale producers are incredibly well placed to boost production if they are supported with a means to do so. So now that the world is facing this um, potential uh, widespread food insecurity, there are lots of good reasons to invest in women and small scale farmers even further. Um, and finally, we were referring to the element of this crisis that has to do with fuel prices and the higher production cost uh, uh, caused by that. So now it's right time to make sure that we invest in renewable energy in food systems. So farmers become less dependent on fossil fuels and they can keep product producing despite this um, higher cost of fossil fuels. And also promoting more efficient use of energy along all food, I mean, all along the food, the food systems. Um, these measures may require you know, longer time, it's not about months, it's years, but we have to understand that at the end of the day, what we need is this holistic responses. Some of them will have a very immediate effect. Some of them may require a few months, some of them longer. But the thing is that if we do not act now with this holistic perspective, trying to address the different elements in this equation, we will not be able to tackle the many problems that the world may face in terms of food insecurity um, in, in the upcoming months. Thank you uh, so much. It has been a pleasure to share this with you. And let's make sure that working together, trying to address all these issues, we will be able to avoid the worst aspects of a food insecurity crisis of global scale.